Hey there everyone, how's it going? So I've been uh, thinking of doing this for a little while now. Um, and I was like, all right, well now's the time. I got a new camera, figured out oh, what the hell, I might as well. Um, we're gonna do a room tour, a collection room tour. So, I mean, this is my third room tour, third room that I've built, okay? And every single one of them are different and every single one of them have been different in collection and different in layout and, you know, and I'm actually gonna do a show showing the progression of how it started and how it is now and and um, kind of talk about how you're gonna do changes over over your lifetime, you know, cause I've been collecting 35 years um, and a lot of people might watch this and think, holy crap, he's rich. He's got all this money to spend on Star Wars toys. Well, I'm here to tell you I'm, that's wrong. I am an electrician. I make decent money. I'm not a millionaire. I, I've been buying this stuff for years. And that's why I have accumulated what I've accumulated. So um, with that being said, we'll, we'll, I started, you know, we'll do the show and have a com comparison of how it was and, and, and even show how I built this one. But uh, I figured we'd just get started. This is this is my collection room, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen it on the Rogue One Six channel. Um, it's not it's not something I've hidden. It's something I've shown quite a bit. Um, it's something I'm very proud of, and I've put a lot of work into building. Um, not even just accumulating all of my items but also building displays and um, models and also a lot of this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the relationships that i have formed over the years um you know with guys overseas and guys you know who collect the same things and guys who you know selling things and and um it's been a lot of fun and so I guess we'll just kind of like start from one end and kind of go through a little bit, not too detailed, you know, we're, we're just go a little bit into what, what, what this become has, how this has formed. Um, so you got your Novos and like, I mean, most of these pieces are pretty recognizable. That one is special to me because my wife bought it for me, you know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's some, it's, it's actually very um emotionally attached to it so and like i most of my collection i don't sell i keep just i i really don't if i don't have to a lot of these i've had since you know they first came out you know I, like right now let's just say the value of if you were to buy one of these uh darth talons on ebay you'd probably spend fifteen hundred two thousand dollars maybe more I bought it for 300 bucks, you know? Um, it's just how I've accumulated some stuff over the years. And, you know, it's, so this is, this is, this is an overall of this area. Uh, it's my Star Wars hot toy area. Um, I like, I like Boba Fett. So I've pretty much gotten my collection to a lot of, I have all the Boba Fett, um, Hot toys. I probably will never get rid of them. Um, some of these I bought from friends. Some of them I bought from um, other collectors. Some of them I bought from from um, Hot Toys Sideshow itself, right? So I love snow troopers. They're one of my favorites. And, you know, I that's the two pack and the single pack. I just freaking love them. I always have, I always will. As you'll see, I'll have a, I have a life size one. Uh, this one's special to me because I got to know a collector just from buying a bunch of hot toys from and he we used to meet in the parking lot and talk about just stand there and talk about collectibles and uh, he's he was moving away and he's like hey I have something I want to give you and it was an EFX stormtrooper helmet I'm like really he's so I'm like dude seriously you want something for this he's like no 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 I just really enjoyed our talks and really enjoyed coming and hanging out with you so you know that's that holds a special place in my collection and you know 
we got more more Boba Fett of course more Boba Fett more Boba Fett and these hilts are the Disney hilts they are the hilts they're actually my son's Disney hilts they bought those in in um in Disney so then you got the katana and this salacious oh man he's gorgeous he's so well done so beautifully done the guys over at regal robot how i mean like seriously look at that face look at the detail he looks like he could talk at any second you know like just and 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 look at the the rock that he comes the stand that he comes on he's it looks like i mean it looks like real rock but it's not one of my favorite things about salacious here is um how he looks like a puppet he looks like you could put your hand into him and you can use him as a puppet and talk uh, one of the other favorite things about this is i don't know if you can see it very well on here but you can see his spine like the the bumps of his spine are just you can you can feel them and see the ribs in there i can't say enough about how well this is done tom did tom and his crew did an amazing job i uh, actually very privileged to have got, been able to go up to his shop and pick it up um and see his wonderful shop and meet all of his you know a lot of his um crew so uh let's stick to the hot toys we'll get to the models then um so i love marvel i love marvel guardians of the galaxy i love thor i a lot of these my wife bought for me um i'd never sell them i have them prominently displayed even though this is mostly a star wars room mostly uh I love them. Infinity War, that era of Marvel is exceptionally awesome. Um, I went to the movies with my sons, took all, took my sons to each and every movie. Um, they grew up loving these movies, albeit lately I haven't been all that happy with them. But so here's my shelf. This is this is like a miscellaneous shelf that you know when I add more. This piece for my brother. I, I didn't like that character in the first Iron Man, but when he was in um, Shang Chi, loved him. Um, so yeah, and and also I have three rockets. I love Rocket. He's he's I love Guardians of the Galaxy and Rocket. He's one of my favorite characters. And then Thor Ragnarok, one of my favorite Marvel movies. I love them. So also, just so, I don't know if you can see on here. Um, on, I have, I have all of these uh, uh, LEDs wired in the wall with low voltage wiring, because I'm an electrician, um, that if I turn off, Alexa, turn off basement. Alexa, turn on night lights. They come on when I. They have their own circuit. Well, there's like the Iron Man. I have to, I have to wire up. But you could see it a lot over here, with, you know, Shaq T, and Talon, and Maul, and over there with. We'll get to that statue then. Alexa, turn on basement. <laughs> So, uh, you know, also another uh, Regal Robot piece. This was, um, I'm, as you can see, I'm a vintage collector as well. This was an art piece drawn by a guy over in England named Barry Jones. He uh, he takes, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you want, like faces. But at one point he was doing vintage figures and he asked him to do Four Lama Zuckus, which are some of my favorite uh, action figures and man it's it's just turned out beautiful like it's all sepia and i'll show my artwork i have that up on a different level um different steps 
Um, so I guess we'll get into another Regal Robot. Let's stick with Regal Robot for now. What can you say? I mean, Chewbacca, freaking amazing Chewbacca, and the Rancor, oh, just beautiful, just gorgeous. I mean, look at those beady eyes. This one had a, the Chewbacca had a funny story actually. I took my kids um, with me to Regal Robot to see his shop and pick up Chewbacca and. Um, the weekend at Bernie's um, movie came to mind, so we said we, we had uh, Chewbacca driving home with us in the middle. You know, um, I actually have a picture of it. I'll have to sh post that on here, uh, put it in the corner so you can see what I'm talking about. It was a great trip with my sons, and something I'll remember. A lot of this stuff has meaning. A lot of this stuff has sentimental value to me. Um, like like this okay so this is uh, rs prop masters for, you know most of you know what this is but it also is uh, a rogue one six um exclusive which rob came to us and was like hey let's do this i'm like hell yeah this is this is that's a, a awesome piece and one that's per and important to me you know um i've had that for a while tie bust from rs i love rs prop masters bus they're just amazing so another fun thing over here is my son's first lightsabers those are important to me um i'll put a picture up as why because it's just i love this picture it's on my it's on my nightstand um <laughs> and then my son's recreated it for me later on for father's day i actually choked me up and made me made me tear up because it meant that much to me um so we'll start we'll get into the helmets get into the helmet shelves i'll give you an overall and turn down this turn down the brightness it's a little dark it's a little bright there we go there we go there we go i'm learning how to use this camera oh, what can you say about our ass helmets I mean they're just they're just stunning like that's my hero um stormtrooper and to be honest when i first wanted a stormtrooper helmet i wanted a hero i didn't want one that had like bumps and drips and stuff like that but now now that i've educated myself a little bit and i've come to realize how special they are the hcp is just I mean, you can't see it in here. Maybe if I go close, you can see like the the drips and the chips and how it's made and how it's supposed to be, look like the real prop. Maybe on an angle you can see. Just that's that's that. I love it. It's amazing. You know. And the, now these are Novos. These are Novos, and I started collecting helmets with the Novos. Um, and they're they're great they're just heavy and they're but i would absolutely 100 percent prefer to have an rs prop master helmet over a novos helmet case in point uh so here we got the pilot shelf um and the beautiful y-wing helmet Ugh. i wanted one of those ever since i saw them and was lucky enough to actually get on get get one I'm still consider myself very lucky to have gotten that more pilots i'd buy all the pilots if i had if i had the room in all honesty um and this one here this general merrick helmet was a special one because it was uh it was supposed to be a it ended up being a christmas gift from rs to the guys and i um i helped facilitate it happening and if you look you can see right there that says Rogue One Six in, in uh, oh god, why am I spacing on the the language? <laughs> uh, the Star Wars alphabet. Um, god, it'll come to me later when I'm not on camera. So, yeah, that's that's a special one for us. The four of us have one, and I would never get rid of it. Besides the fact that it's an awesome looking helmet, 
and it has really incredible colors you can't see the blue that well um, my Rogue One helmets mostly a Novos some uh, some are um, uh, custom they're beautiful okay down here are my clone trooper helmets that I that I built and painted myself um, I first started dabbling in in uh, in painting um, helmets and before I started painting before I did models so it's it was something that just got me started on uh, painting DAC helmet and the uh, Nissan Rogue One sick Rogue One um, Range Trooper helmet. Oh, I love that helmet. I wish they'd come out with a hot toy or a statue or something of him. One of my favorite designs in Star Wars. Also, the uh, the Death Star walls I built myself. Uh, actually, no, I should not say myself. My dad helped me build this entire basement. Everything in it, every shelf, these 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 Death Star walls. He helped me build the entire thing every day, helping me and that means a lot because I got to spend time with my dad, you know, and my dad's not going to be around forever. And I, I loved every minute I spent with him. Uh, more Boba Fett. Novos, uh, not Novos, um, Mythos, Mythos Boba Fett. I'm not a huge start statue collector. Uh, I've had a bunch, but, um, I ended up getting rid of a lot of them. Um, I just, I don't know. There's only certain ones that I absolutely have to have. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, uh, so Boba Fett, RS helmet, freaking gorgeous. I mean, it, it, um, I hope you can see the details on it. I know there's a better camera, but you get to see some of the, let's turn down the, brightness you can see a little bit better there we go you can see the paint job on this thing is oh, bar none I mean look at that look at it if you ever get a chance to get your hands on one of these it's one of the top collect pieces in my collection more statues I love the Gamorrean Guard mythos love it love it love it love it love it this is a special item to me it was sent to me by a viewer um, he's like hey do you want this I'm like yeah but I don't really have the money for it right now. I was like, no no don't worry about it just 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 I want it to be displayed in a good collection I'm like dude I can't just take this for for free he's like no it's yours have it and then I won this on the hyperdrive, the one, the cheese grater, Imperial Naval Officer. That's a special piece to me as well. Like I said, most of my pieces have some meaning and are special to me, and I would never sell them. Uh, RS oh, Troop, uh, Snow Trooper. Wow, just wow. Full sized. Snow Trooper. I cut up the mannequin. I have to finish the hands though. I have to finish the hands with the gun. I have them sitting at the bottom there. So just got to make fingers to wrap around the gun. And hopefully I'll do that one of these days. We'll see. <laughs> Grievous Sideshow. All right. So back in 2005, I think, I went to Celebration 3. And I had never bought a statue before, and I saw this, and I said to myself, holy crap, I will never be able to afford that. And it was like, I've gotta have that one day. Fast forward a couple years, I was able to pick it up, and I've had it since then, probably since 2006 or seven, and very delicate, very per beautiful, awesome, I just remember thinking to myself, look, seeing it in behind the glass case and thinking, God, I've got to have that one day. And 
my Iron Studios Vader. So, I guess we should get into the elephant in the room. The vintage collection. Okay. So where do I begin with this? They're all sealed. They're all original. Well, okay, I take that back. 99.9% .9 of them are original. I, I'll describe those later. Um, but most of these, I used to work at a comic store when I was younger, in my 20s. And people would come in and they would ask us if we wanted to buy them. And we'd say, sure. Well, they would never make it to the shelves. They would just make it to my collection because I would just buy them right from the for, right from the collectors. And that's where most of them came from. They also came from other collectors um, over the years. Um, a lot of them are graded. Um, all of them are in great shape. And all of them will never leave my collection. They will never, ever, ever leave my collection. Here, I'm going to turn off the Death Star tile so you can see it better. Okay. You can see them better without the tile, the Death Star walls in the background. Yep. My goal was to have every carded figure on their debut card. So like, you know, Hammerhead, I wanted on the Star Wars card, not an Empire card. You know, um, it's just been years. Okay, so here's where the 0.09% come in. Um, I like the, these figures from, I wanted to Hasbro to continue the line, and they never did. Um, so I took some of my favorite figures and had custom cards made on you know, for certain ones that were never carded, were never actually carded. So like right there, like the cloud car pile is real. The K3PO is 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 um of a uh, custom card. I only have a couple of them. Um, I actually have a lot of like Rogue One sick Rogue One, um, and a few other figures that I really really liked that I've always wanted them to do vintage cards on and they never did so and my goal like here so there was two empire strikes back luke skywalker bespins i wanted to have both picture cards so like you know when you have there's another form of that too there's the bespin leia i don't have the other one of that yet she, there's one where she's stit or her whole body um and the bounty hunters for Lam and Zuckus. They're dirt. I don't know why they f I'm fascinated by them, but I am. I just because Kenner messed up the names. Because I mean, for Lam is a droid name, Zuckus is a being name, so you could tell they got mixed up. And then they corrected it later on with Hasbro, but they'll always be Zuckus and for Lam to me. Um, the next thing are Zuckus and Forlom, uh, Revenge of the Jedi proofs. So these were made when Jedi was starting to be formed. Okay. Um, and it turns out that George Lucas changed the name after they already built up all the, a lot of their promotional items. So they never made it with figures on the card. They just were supposed to be, they were supposed to be um, destroyed, but a lot of them got out and into the public. And for a long time, they weren't valuable and people were just, you know, handing them to each other. But then people became wise to how impre incredibly important they are. And now they are a little expensive. Um, but like I said, I did not pay today's prices for these figures. I paid dirt cheap prices when I uh, when I um, was working at the comic store. It was just, you know, from years of collecting. And it's just, I'm not done yet. I have almost all of them. My goal, like I said, I have my goal is to have one of every carded figure. Uh, one of these days I'll get there. Hopefully, 
I'll never own a Yak Face or a um, or a Anakin. They're a little bit out of my price range. But yeah. So then here we go. Uh, vehicles. I love Star Wars ships. I always have. I've always loved them. They were always favorite part of me for Star Wars. For some reason, they just seem to have a personality. They just seem to be. They meant more to me than even the characters, Han, Luke, and Leia. You know, like I just love the Slave One. I love the Falcon. I mean, the the Adat. I mean, it's just just they're incredibly iconic and just so loved it's just and i owned a lot of these as kids and played with them and beat the crap out of them and you know never ever thought to um keep them in package but then once i started getting a little older i'm like oh i love the packaging i gotta get them so i started and, you know here i am now 30 years later these are the vintage collection, the modern vintage collection. I still, I like those a lot, but I don't have nearly as much as I used to. Okay, so remember we were talking about the, um, the Revenge of the Jedi proof? So I actually have a Revenge of the Jedi proof for this Falcon. Um, I bought it a long time ago, uh, about a year or so ago. Um, and it is truly my grail. Uh, I don't have it on display yet because I have to send it out. I want to get it graded and encased in in acrylic before because they're pretty delicate, so I don't take it out very much. One of these days I'll actually get to do that. It's been a year. I should have did it a long time ago. But I didn't. But I will. Uh, models. My newest obsession. Models. Models. Star Wars ship models. They are, they are what I eat, sleep, and breathe right now. It's, it's exact. I mean, just my wife's tired of hearing about it. <laughs> She's tired of me working on them. Um, some of them I built. Some of them I bought. This X-Wing I built. Um, built and painted. And didn't think I would want an X-Wing, to be honest. I don't know why it never appealed to me. But after building it and seeing all the different colors and and chipping and uh, it's 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 amazing. I love it. I wouldn't want to build another one though. <laughs> it was a lot more work than I thought it would be. Just the just the layering, because like you have brown and red and green and not green, um, blue, and then like different layers. You can see and slave one. I built this slave one. It's a nice ink kit. It lights up. Is it lit up? Nope. I'll turn on. Um, built this the nice ink kit. This is actually the second model that I built. So I'm pretty proud of it. Um, a lot of work, a lot of research, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of blood actually from cutting my fingers and you can see the back with all the details of all the kit parts I could spend all day just looking at the kit parts those engines light up I'll show that later I don't feel like going over and turning on um, my first my first model let's, so let's turn it on Let's turn them on and see, see, see what I'm talking about. They go on with a switch. So inside is fiber optics that blink. Blink. And on the back, yeah, the engines light up. Let me see it back, back a little bit. Wish you could see the the way it lights up. Let's see if we can turn it down a little bit. Nope, other way. Nope, that ain't gonna work. All right, so you can see some of this though. Falcon, 
all fiber optics ran fiber optics through for the cockpit some of them blink some of them don't um, again electrician so I could do these things and this baby first model ever built the Agostini. very good model for somebody to build the first time um, it kind of is laid out for it's like step by step paint job you gotta learn how to do but for the building of it it's pretty well done see how that those fans look like they're turning when you go around across the cool shade I love that and in the pieces there I think my lighting in my room is a little too harsh sometimes a little too too bright a little too they're on dimmers but sometimes so then I built these rocks they're actually just foam painted so they look like asteroids and this I just got my wampa rug from wonderful Paul over at RS he sent me no not Paul I'm sorry Andy Andrew Andrew Clark not Paul sorry Andy sorry Andrew he got me that for Christmas and we'll start up the we'll start up the Falcon let's start it up there it goes special LEDs to to run it um, it's but you can't really see it pulsing but it's supposed to pulse like uh, yeah you can see it it pulses like it's flying there we go yeah pretty cool love it uh my second my second um model i ever built is a sand crawler i've actually built two i'm probably gonna build a couple more for people um just recently decided to start doing some commissions regularly uh yeah, i'm gonna end up doing a couple sand crawlers if you're interested let me know um this was a lot of fun i love doing this this was a, a great model to build love painting it there's leds there's um fiber optics inside there as well and there's also i don't know if you can see him uh, CZ3 in there uh, you'd have to zoom in on it but um, there's a little figure of CZ3 in there uh, I just want to have a droid in there you can maybe see him there a little bit there he is and he even has holes drilled into his feet so he looks like a vintage figure okay this I could go on for hours about this is a special piece to me from my friend John Simmons who built this and I pried it out of his hands because I needed to have it and I actually um, literally pried it out of his cat's hands so <laughs> um, the detail on this is insane it's freaking crazy and I wish you could see a little better Let's turn up the lighting again. There we go. There we go. You can see it a lot better. Good camera. Hopefully it tapes good. <laughs> Hopefully it looks as good as it's taping. But ah, I love this thing. These are adjustable. They go up and down. Uh, it spins, rotates. I wanted this since I first looked at John's... Um, first time I ever looked at John's uh, Facebook page I thought oh my god this thing is absolutely beautiful and getting it in person it's even more beautiful uh, plus the fact that I have recently just become very good friends with John and uh, it makes it even more special because our friendship has grown over the last year or so because of 
you know us talking about models and me buying pieces from him and i have a couple pieces from him as well over there on the shelf we'll get to them then um but yeah these are my model setup now even this is going to change because i i'm running out of room i need to add more room so i think i'm going to do something in the middle build some shelves that'll look sort of like that but all the way across so i have more room for them uh one more shelf of models um so these are from jason eaton they are death star towers that i think are cast from the originals don't quote me I, I think they're cast from the originals um amazing artist J jason eaton he i marvel at his is uh his talent in making models these are just basic things that he's made compared to some of the incredible things that he has done over the years i wish i had half the skill he has in one pinky um but I love these. I never actually thought I would own a piece from Eaton um, because of how like detailed and extravagant they are. Um, but I was able to acquire these and I'm very thankful for them. Um, so this one I built, I scratch built this myself. Uh, part of the fun of modeling is, is doing the reference and figuring out the parts that and I was able to ID a few of these parts that hadn't prior, previously been ID before, to my knowledge, and to the knowledge of a couple other people that I talked to. But yeah, this was this was absolutely uh, just addictive in how deep I've dived in, dive, dove into it. You know, uh, here's another amazing piece from John. Uh, I love his paintwork. His paintwork is is what I aspire to. Eaton's building is what I aspire to, aspire to. Um, he and and Lee Ralph as well. They they're amazing builders and painters. John specializes in his painting, which is what what I I'm trying. Um, another one that I scratch built is this uh, hospital backdrop backdrop background ship. Um, I have sort of addiction to background ships as you'll see I have three of them and I'm building more but this one I scratch built from donor kit parts and painted myself um, I borrowed Jason Eaton's design for bases for my own personal um, models because I love them I, l I love the cl clean simplicity of it and how it displays this one here is from Lee Ralph so Lee Ralph is an immaculate builder. Just his such clean, precise, almost surgical building of model parts. I painted it. I wanted it to look like the home one Mon Cal ships, you know, with just a little bit of color um, muted underneath, you know, the grays. I'm really happy with that. I love it. Like I said, background ships. I gotta build another base. Um, another background ship from John Simmons. This is the the Dornian in Return of the Jedi. I mean, this thing. I this thing's beautiful. I mean, it's a background ship. Most people don't even know about it, but it is awesome. Just awesome. And um, funny story. I got, oh no, it's, it happened with this. It happened with this one. Um, this is the ATDT from Solo. <sighs> Come on. I mean, this was built by John Simmons. Scratch built from about donor kit parts and painted like you wouldn't believe. The, come on, focus. The detail on this is unreal. Um, I actually got this and showed it to my son. <laughs> he always says to me, he says, Dad, I don't mean to make you feel bad, but he said, your stuff's really good, painted, but this is a whole nother level. 
<laughs> I'm like, you don't have to, you're not offending me because I realize that there's just, there's just a whole nother level to this. So on this shelf, I have some, I, you know, these are, these are gifts for my kids. Um, Christmas gifts for my kids that they know I love, you know, Star Wars and Marvel and, you know, um, this plaque here is going to be, I'm going around getting signatures for all the Firefly cast for it to do a, uh, um, a Firefly, uh, Serenity model. Um, but yeah, my son got me a vision and pops and there's more, um, there's more down there and there's a couple other things down there that are just miscellaneous that I don't know what to do with sometimes, but, uh, oh, artwork. Yeah, we didn't get to artwork. Artwork. All right. This was made by my neighbor. He laser cut that for me. Cool little gift. Great guy. So I guess we can get into some of this artwork. Um, I don't own a lot of prints. I have a few. What I do have, I really enjoy. Um, these are supposed to be um macquarie boba fett's in vintage figure style really cool and the holiday special one and then we have a few art prints there macquarie stuff here we have this was drawn, I went, I used to collect comic art, commissioned comic art, and a guy named Eric Basadula. Loved his artwork, he draws very sexy women. That's his forte, He that's what he does. So one year, my wife and I went to Pittsburgh Comic Con, and I waited in line for two hours before he got there, and waited for two hours while he drew this, and this is gonna get buried with me. Um, I love it. I mean, how could you not? Again, more sentimental value, more, more personal. Um, I used to really love the X Men. This is uh, the Goblin Queen, Madeline Pryor, drawn by Daniel Govar. Beautiful piece. And another one by Daniel Govar. It's uh, Shaq T fighting uh, Ranker. And I also absolutely love Game of Thrones. So I have a few Game of Thrones art pieces drawn by various artists. Yeah. So that is my collection room. I hope you enjoyed it. I am sure it will change a lot over the years. It probably will be different tomorrow. Um, <laughs> But uh, I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to do a show before and after because at one point, this whole wall was all three and three quarter figures just lined up on there and and stat and ships underneath. Now all of those are gone. I sold all those modern figures. They just don't appeal to me anymore. Um, they're great, but it's just, I've, I've kind of changed tastes. And these... My sons know will never leave my collection either. They will be willed down to them. They will receive them when I'm gone. And hopefully it means a lot to them when they do have them. Because that's why I bought them. So, hope you enjoyed my collection room tour. Um, like and subscribe to Rogue One Six. We do a lot of this. We do a lot of shows about collections and um, studio scale modeling mostly lately and a lot of cool fun talk about Star Wars and you know we do a lot of Star Wars but we also do other things like Marvel, Batman, studio modeling, found parts, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching and just collect what you love, brother. That's all you gotta do. Don't buy for value, buy because you love it.